Hi, this is Dr. Shweta Aratya and welcome to Limitless Brain channel where we discuss different things bringing neuroscience into your everyday life. Now, stress is one big thing which the world is discussing today. If you look at the latest Gallup statistics and if you look at the last data on the total number of the people in the world who is stressed, the numbers are absolutely mind-boggling and also saddening to us as doctors or to us as medical fraternities because the impact of the stress can be so detrimental when it comes to the impact on physical health, mental health and we are seeing a lot of people around us stressed. But in this session, I want you to break some aspects and myths about how the stress happens, etc. and what we can do. It is not something that we need to so much worry about. We can actually come out of the stress if we understand what is really causing stress, how in the brain the processing of a stressor is happening when I have stress, which means I have a second thing called the stressor. And then what are the techniques or lifestyle habits on a daily basis that I need to do to overcome stress. Now, sometimes the stress becomes extremes and in the workplace setting, we call it the burnout as well. There's lots and lots of these things which are being discussed now. Obviously, post COVID, we are seeing a new world. We are seeing a lot of difficulties, etc. But let's get to the base or the neuroscience of it. And I promise once you understand it from a completely different angle, it will be a different life to live. So question is, first of all, is stress zero possible? Like, you know, you drink the Coke Zero. Oh, there's everything out of the Coke Zero or the Pepsi Zero, which is good because you think you're not taking sugar, but you are still taking some of the chemicals, right? It's not that it's completely safe and uh, totally good for health. The similar way, stress zero is almost impossible. There are two systems which are functional in our body, which is helping us for our everyday life. What are these two systems? One system is called the sympathetic system. It is when I want to fight, you know, I want to bring it on my uh, actions because I have something to address to. My blood should flow, I should be active, I should be ready. That is the sympathetic system. And my basal system, which means I need to be calm, I need to be composed, my blood pressure should be right, my pulse should be right, I should, my muscle activity should be at the baseline, which is helping. That is called the parasympathetic system. So the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system are parallelly working. To help us, actually, both the systems are equally important. But what is important is the balance. Now, what happens in the stress? Now, let's assume that as we are chatting together in this conversation, there is a tiger which comes in. Assume that there is a tiger which is coming in. You and me both will run for life. If our sympathetic system was not active, it was not possible for us to run for life. We would just be sitting there calm, composed. That's not going to help us because the tiger is going to take our lives. So whenever there is a threat, an imminent problem which comes in the life, sympathetic system has to be ready. Sympathetic system should be allowing me to prepare myself. But what happens often, and this is what is called eustress, I want to be in a zone when I'm optimally functioning. I want to be in a zone when all of my uh, activities are helping to avoid that stressor or to work for that stressor. But oftentimes it goes haywire. Constant, constant stimulation, constant this sympathetic access is actually leading me to stress or de-stress. So there is something called the eustress, which is beneficial because that is allowing me to have the balance. But there is something called the distress. And most people have to understand this uh, difference between the distress and eustress. Now, there is a, a little bit of a peak performance curve, which is often uh, used in the setting for making to understand this particular part. It's a super, super easy thing to understand that on the right side of the spectrum we feel bored we feel uh, unmotivated or demotivated while on the right side of the spectrum it's the burnout it's the overwhelming performance or impaired performance or excessive demand which is there but our aim should be to somewhere be in the middle which is optimum or a response which is favorable for our systems now this sympathetic and parasympathetic systems are automatically working working, functioning, but what should I be observing? So I should be knowing when I'm stressed, is my heart rate getting faster? Am I sweating? Am I feeling terrific? Am I feeling fearful? Am I feeling shaky? Am I feeling that I have some tremors? 
all that is indicative dry mouth if you are appearing for an exam if you're preparing for an interview if you have something big coming up in your life you have to attend to something automatically sympathetic system functions and if you observe carefully these are all the symptoms now all this activation of the sympathetic if it continues every single day of your life let's assume that you are overpowering over stimulating yourself your sympathetic is pushing to the limits you start to be in a state of chronic stress now there are a lot of problems which happens in the brain with the chronic stress your memory centers go down overall blood flow in the brain is reduced your attention reduces you are constantly in also the limbic or the emotional brain which we were speaking about your limbic brain or emotional brain is giving rise to this fight flight fear freeze response it is constantly attending to the threats it is feeling unsafe or it is feeling psychologically in a state where it cannot protect itself all this is happening behind the scene when you are stressed not just the external mind or the brain but also all the body organs are bearing the brunt of that stress we see a lot of diseases right and i'm a, i'm a strong 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 believer no disease 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 you have to be at ease but that ease is gone does not come merely by one factor it is always multifactorial in nature i like to call it the psycho neuro physio immuno endocrinology which means it starts in the mind goes to the brain and then sort of trickles down forwards in your immunology and endocrinology in fact there was a study which was done that if you just walk into nature you just you know with the and and japanese call it the forest bath when you are in the midst of some beautiful trees and forest what will happen is those chemicals will allow you to kick in something called the natural killer cells and these natural killer cells help you protect they are the ones that protect from uh, viruses from threats from bugs so that improves your immunity now just simply a simple nature walk is giving rise to such a fundamental effect so lots of things in the stress how to tackle will come but let me come back to the main point of what we were discussing there was a very big study which was done which says that we think about 50000 thoughts a day now obviously quantification of such a paramount uh, magnitude is uh, is is absolutely difficult to assume or even imagine but what was very important to read in that study was that there are only three patterns or consistent thoughts of the same type that we think and have you and me none of us are different when it comes to these three patterns so what are those patterns but number first pattern was about the self health most people are always worried about their health the second one was relationships what is my relationship to my spouse to my child to my employee to my friend relationship was second on the card and the third thing was work money safety security progress profession etc so anything to do with that finances or financial security was part of that third bucket now i want you to contemplate i want you to think a little deeper at this point in time are you having one of these repetitive thoughts in your life well the fourth one which was not so commonly found was about evolution how do i upgrade myself how do i understand the bigger power the higher power the higher consciousness or whatever you call it but that was part of the evolution most times we as species we want to survive if we go back to the caveman days or if we go back to the hunter gatherer days our life was about protecting our life was making a space where i am safe making sure that i survive so it was always about growth survival and propagation and very limited people do also get into the space of evolution now once we study that these are the three paramount factors which allows us for people to be actually overwhelmed or overthinking i think you have to spend some time do an audit and understand which is the one which is most bothersome now often times if relationships please understand also the man and woman biology both the man and women's brains are wired slightly differently i would say and and that is a biological evolutionary process a man's brain is often linearly wired very monofocal they were the hunter gatherers while women's brain is more multifunctional can take care of a lot of things often seemingly multitasking type of the things they are more cross connected has a thick 
between the two brains there is a thick band of fiber called corpus callosum so your left and the right there are intricate connections in the networks there is slightly uh, different functional neurochemistry which is happening between the man and the woman like for example when they fall in love right if there is that is that is the time when the first time they have sex in that case the man is not releasing a chemical called oxytocin and oxytocin is important for bonding while women does that and man is actually producing testosterone so if over and over and over a period of time and in fact if the man and the woman takes a little longer to have the courtship and then have the uh, sexual affair then in that case the oxytocin for the man also is high so there is a difference when it comes to the neurochemistry for the man and the woman now it is very very important for us to understand that if you are going through that process in your life relationships are not easy but relationships are important it is the social part of the brain that we all have to live and survive but we also have to understand and explore that from a biological standpoint now men often feel women are too emotional and women are too uh, hula about small things while women just feel the opposite now this is also the part of the estrogen progesterone the other hormones which are happening i cannot go and change a biological evolution but what i can change is the understanding of that evolution and i think we will keep on chatting about this topic in our neuro love and relationship part which is also very very important because here is the time when you want to take a pause if that is what is bothering you to understand and play the game better i would call it let's make it a game where i understand the rules you understand the rules and we play it better now we were talking about the impact of the stress impact of the stress on the brain now let's again go back to the three fundamental brains that we have the brain stem uh, which is the basic surviving uh, and and my heart is beating i'm just there i'm alive because of the brain stem going a little further up it's the emotional brain and a little further up it's the rational brain emotional brain is also called the limbic brain and the rational brain also called the pfc or the prefrontal cortex i was explaining in my previous videos that it is like a seesaw if your emotional cortex is extremely functioning if it is always active then my prefrontal cortex is relatively shut down or relatively slow functioning it is like a seesaw and a switch which is just opposing to each other so when i'm emotionally overwhelmed i cannot think rationally when i'm emotionally supercharged i cannot make a good judgment what is good for me what is not so good for me will i want this will i wait for this this is not what is right at this time this is the judgment that i have for a certain thing going forwards for my life often missing now generally the prefrontal cortex also takes a long time to form 25 26 is what uh, the science has said that that is the time when it evolves when it matures and that is the reason why a lot of teenagers and i included when i was a teenager are often irrational teenagers brain don't understand they throw tantrums they have all kinds of problems and issues essentially because of the lack of this prefrontal cortex so having this emotional mastery having this understanding of the emotions or what i call the mathematics of emotion is extremely important when it comes to assessment of the stress there are four fundamental needs when it comes to the uh, emotional assessment which most people have one is safety second one is relationships third is growth and fourth is individuality in fact most organizations and there are enough studies done in it that if you allow the employee to be autonomous and also individually designing the program project etc without much interference the output is way better than what will you have with a clash happening between a manager as well as an employee safety is absolutely crucial for an individual same thing play uh, having a respect caring understanding belonging friendship type of a relationship extremely important as well